In my previous videos, I've shown you how to add fractions with uncommon and unrelated denominators by creating equivalent fractions and then adding them together once you have a common denominator. We're kind of going to do that today, but I'm going to show you what some people feel is an easier way to get your equivalent fractions in your common denominator. So without further ado, I present to you the cross-multiplying method that I use. To find our common denominator, I multiply our two denominators together. This will always give you a common denominator between the two. So 7 times 3 is 21. That is our common denominator. To find our numerators, this is where the term cross-multiplying comes in. We cross-multiply. So 2 times 7 is 14, and since I used the numerator over here, it becomes the numerator down here. Now, for the other side, we cross again. Oops. We cross again for 3 times 3. And since I used the numerator on this side, we put the 9 over here. Now, we have our common denominators, so we can add them together. 14 plus 9 is 23. Denominator stays the same at 21. So we get 23 twenty firsts, which is the same as 1 and 2 twenty firsts. That's really all there is to the cross multiplying method when we're trying to add fractions together. Let's try another example though to see why it helps, but why it might not always be the best choice. So here I have 5 sixths plus 1 ninth. Just like before, we'll multiply our denominators together. So multiply 6 times 9, and we get 54. Cross multiply, so 5 times 9. Remember we use the numerator on this side, so we're going to put it down here. 5 times 9 is 45. And then cross multiply on the other side. So 1 times 6, which is 6, and since we use the numerator over here, it becomes the numerator down there. So when we add it together, we get 51 fifty-fourths. Now this is great, but here's the problem. 54, while it is a common denominator, it's not the smallest denominator we could have found. Because of that, we now have a much larger denominator, and, well, we're going to have to simplify. We cannot leave this the way it is, because it is not in lowest terms. So let's figure out how to simplify it. To simplify this, we would have to find what is the greatest common factor that 51 and 54 both share. Well, if we look at a factor chart or we know our multiples, we know that they both share 3. So 51 divided by 3 is 17, 54 divided by 3 is 18. So we end up with the reduced fraction of 17 eighteenths. So this worked out just fine, but we had to do an extra step. Had we found a common denominator of 18 to begin with, well, I would have had 15 eighteenths for this side. I would have had 2 eighteenths from the other side, and I would have ended up with 17 eighteenths as a result right away. Both methods work. Cross multiplying can result in having to simplify the fractions at the end instead of just having your answer because you cannot leave your fractions unsimplified. Hope this helps and enjoy.